So we're going to give it about a minute before we start the live stream. We'll start about a minute and 30 seconds. Today we're going to talk about all of the basic steps that you need to cover in order to make sure that your business is properly set up to get funding. Now, before I begin to understand that this is not financial advice, you still should sit down with an attorney and an accountant to make sure that you're doing your due diligence and you're following all of the things that you need to follow. Uh, also, just to show you that I'm not some guy on the internet that's just rambling, as you can see right here, this is a business credit card. I also have one of the booklets that LegalZoom sends you once you get incorporated. So I'm clearly telling you that I've been doing this now for four years. Uh, I have three businesses. I have never been denied a credit card following these simple methods. Trust me, they work. Now, I know some of you, you're going to say, oh, but you can do this stuff for free. Understand as an entrepreneur, yes, you can cut corners and you can get some things done for free. But what will happen and what you will learn very quickly is that if you skip certain steps, it could be very detrimental to your business and it can open you up to a lot of legal liabilities as far as getting sued, especially if you are in a state like New York or California. So again, this is just a basic template. You, you have to learn as an entrepreneur to take what applies to you and leave what doesn't apply to you. You don't have to follow this step for step by step. You may be able to skip a few steps, but from what I've learned and from what I've been doing, these basic steps will ensure that your business is properly set up to receive funding. I followed this method and I have well over a quarter million dollars of unsecured credit cards. Now, there are people on the internet that will charge you three to four thousand dollars for this information i am not charging you anything for this information but i have my paypal and my cash app in the description below so if you feel like you want to contribute to this stream and support this content my links will be below in the description also i have a video where i broke down how i've been building business credit and i showed you the new business credit card that i just recently received again just to reiterate to you that i'm not here trying to just pitch something or sell something to you. There will be no affiliate links whatsoever in this video. I'm simply just doing this to give back to the community. And now with that being said, let's get into the build. The very first thing you need to do as an entrepreneur is you need to figure out what's going to be the name of your company. Now I know that this may sound simple, but when I was in college, my professor had us do something what is known as a SWOT analysis, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You need to really sit down and ask yourself, what industry am I getting into? And what are the weaknesses? And also look at, ask yourself, is my name too generic? What industry do I wanna get in? A lot of people say, I just wanna start a business. You have to really put some thought into what type of business you want to start. Now, let me flip the screen around so that we can get into some more information. And just to make it clear, can everyone hear me clear? Yeah, okay. So once you sat down and you thought about the industry that you want to get into and what type of business you want to start, the next thing you have to start thinking about is SEO, search engine optimization. And you need to start doing some keyword research. Why do you need to start doing that? Because for example, let's say that you're in a real estate niche. You got to think about this. Do you know how hard it is to rank in the search engine for real estate? So you have to kind of think about the industry that you're in and you have to also think about how easy is it for me to rank in the search engines? How profitable is this keyword? So you really need to sit down and do some, you know, some real research and sit down with an attorney as well. The reason why you want to sit down with an attorney is because an attorney can also let you know if you, what type of corporation should you set up? Should it be an LLC? Should it be a C-Corp? Should it be an S-Corp? This is why it's extremely important for you to sit down with an attorney. Also, as far as getting funding, if you have real estate in the name of your company, banks look at that as risky. They're not going to want to loan you money knowing that you have, you have real estate investing in your name. Or if you have capital or things like credit repair, those are immediate red flags to banks and it's going to make it extremely hard for you to get funding. I'm not saying that you won't get funding. What I'm saying is having those things, having those terms and names in your business name is going to make it extremely, extremely hard for you to get funding. So I would try to play around with it. The best thing to do is 
For example, if you are in real estate repair, you don't have to have real estate repair or real estate investing in your name. You could just make it your business name. Just make it your first and last name. Simple. And move on. So then you would go to GoDaddy. You would set up your domain name. You would pick whatever the domain name is. Most domain names are cheap, as you can see. It's $1199. .net's $1399. Go and get both. If you find the donate, the domain name is available. Get the .com in the .net for SEO purposes. Snatch them up. Again, it's about. It's going to cost you about 20 bucks, 30 bucks altogether. Go and do that. The reason why is that with your domain name, you're going to be able to get a professional email. It is extremely important. Give me one second. Let me take a sip of water. It is extremely important that when you are trying to get funding, that you are not using generic Gmail, uh, Ymail, Yahoo, any of the generic email providers. Why? Banks want to see a professional email. So it should be manager at your company's name or owner at your company's name. No Gmails, no Ymails, no dot me's, no Yahoo's. Make sure it's a professional email. This is extremely important. I cannot stress to you. And it needs to match up with your company's name that you are going to incorporate. And as I said before, you should be sitting down with an attorney and going over this information. I know that a lot of you want to skip, you know, cut corners, but is it extremely important that you do these steps because What's going to happen is, is that if the names don't match up, when you go for funding, it's possible that you cannot, you may not get approved. So once you sat down with an attorney, you figured out which type of entity is the best for you, whether it's an LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp, then you set up a domain name, you have a name of your company, you have a professional email. The next step is you need a professional address. You need a commercial address. Do not use your home address as the business address for your company. The minute that they see a residential address, they are automatically going to flag it. Why? Because they're looking at you and they're saying, unless your business is based from home and you have like a mixed use property where you have a commercial side to your property, that's different. But banks want to see like a suite that you're actually using a real business commercial address. Now, again, it's going to be very hard and expensive for you to come right out the gate and start shelling out $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month for office space. So what you can do is there's a website known as DaVinci.com. They provide you with virtual offices. A virtual office is extremely cheap, but it's a professional office space. This is where your mail is going to come to. So when, when we get over to the legal Zoom spot, uh, the legal zoom portion and you start putting in your information your address and all of that stuff You're going to put in this actual address. So as you can see here peach tree center This is a actual real office building. This is extremely important that you have this they want to see a professional Address so for example downtown Atlanta, it will only cost you $60 a month to use this space now, you're not physically using this as your office space. You're simply using the address. Why? So that when you put this down on applications, banks, it will look like you actually have a real place of business as opposed to having a home address. And no, you cannot use P.O. boxes. No P.O. boxes, no residential addresses. You want to be using a commercial office space. And again, 60 bucks a month is nothing. It costs not a lot of money. You can forward the mail from the virtual office to your personal residence. But again, this is extremely important. So now, let's just make sure we're following everything. You did your research. You did your analysis. You know the name of the business. You've done some keyword research. You've seen that you can kind of rank in the search engines, depending if it's an online business or offline business. If you have an offline business, it doesn't really matter about ranking in the search engines. But if it's an online business, you want to make sure that you're picking a name for your business that you can rank in the search engine. So now you have your office space. You have the address. Now you come over to LegalZoom.com. You sat down with an attorney. So, yeah, but you got to understand, it may be a phone bill. It, it takes money to make money, right? You're, you, if you're trying to be an entrepreneur, 
You have to spend money to make money. You are not going to be able to do this for free. So if you don't have the money, you don't have the funds, then maybe you may need to take a step back. But it's going to cost you about three to four hundred dollars a month to operate your business if you really want to be in business the right way. Think about it. If I had to spend three hundred dollars, if I had to spend four hundred dollars to get a sixteen thousand dollar credit card, to get a twenty thousand dollar credit card, I'll do that all day long. So now you sat down with the attorney. I came up. The attorney can do all these forms for you, or you can come over to LegalZoom and do it. I prefer to use LegalZoom because it's very easy. Again, once you pick your corporation, your entity, you go with a limited liability. The next step is you come over here, you're going to put your name in. So let's just say test, right? Test company. That's the name of the company. Get started. Very simple, very straightforward. You pick your state. This is extremely important, and this is why I say you may want to sit down with an attorney because depending on your state, different states require you to have different types of licenses. Like, for example, here in New York State, I have to, once my business is registered with the Secretary of State, I then have two months to publish my business in a newspaper. If I do not publish that business in a newspaper, what's going to happen is my business is not going to be in good standing with the state and I, I could possibly be penalized. So different states require you to have different licenses. This is why it's good to use something like LegalZoom or use an attorney because they're going to sit you down and tell you all of the different licenses that you need to apply for and all of the bylaws in the state. So you come to LegalZoom, you pick your state, I'm in New York, you click New York. Also, LegalZoom is going to try to upsell you all of these different type of insurance products and uh, business builders and business helpers. You don't need all that stuff. So I'm telling you this right now. A lot of those things, you don't need it. Do not let them try to upsell you. Go with the basic stuff. So let's go to get my LLC. So as you can see, this is a pretty simple and straightforward way of getting incorporated and depending on your state it may run you anywhere from 150 bucks up to 600 bucks now i know what a lot of you are going to say oh but you can get your ein number for free and you can incorporate you can do all of those things for free i prefer to do it in one space why because i want all of the paperwork to be professionally done sometimes when you do things on your own you may forget to put an i you may forget to put a j you may spell the uh, you may put the uh, address in wrong and that immediately would be a red flag having someone else prepare your documents for you in my personal opinion is the best way to go so either get an attorney that can do this for you or use LegalZoom. and then you just go to continue and is test company first llc yes uh they're going to ask you what the company does. Just put in consulting, a business consultancy. So whatever your business is, will test company have employees in the next? If this is a single member LLC, you don't have to worry about this type of stuff. If you're not going to have any employees, you just simply click no. And then look, they're going to see these are the essential services. This is where they're going to try to upsell you into all of these different things that they have. Continue to legal zoom right now a registered agent some states Require you to have to have a registered agent. That is someone that's going to actually collect your mail on but on your behalf This is important in my state of New York You have to make sure that you have a registered agent and some other states you don't this is why again It's important that you talk to an attorney or you contact legal zoom and find out depending on what state you in if you need a registered agent or not this is extremely important. So you can see it says no charges until your filing documents are submitted to the state and then $159 for the first year renews automatically each year. So again, do your due diligence and see if you need this or if you don't need it. Now, right here it says an operating agreement is $99. An operating agreement plus the EIN is $159. An operating agreement EIN and licenses is $199. So yes, it's possible to get your EIN number for free, but me, I'd rather use LegalZoom. I don't mind paying because at the end of the year, this is going to be a tax write-off. And then it also says, no thanks, I'll provide my own documents. You can do this stuff on your own. I'm just telling you that if you want to get funding and you don't want to have any mistakes, 
just pay for the stuff it's much better to do that business services for see business services uh, no thanks I don't need any of those things total compliance again you don't need these things either so you can just click no thanks and as you can see in 10 days you can have that that brown booklet that I showed you in 10 days you'll get this in the mail 10 business days 15 business days economy 30 business days plus the 210 file 210 dollar filing fee that this is all a personal choice you do not have to do it this way you can take economy I like to get my things expedited so I pay the $349 but as you can see it's extremely affordable to get all your documents and stuff prepared using a website like LegalZoom. You do not have to go and spend thousands of dollars with some fancy attorney. You can simply just do 79 bucks and plus the $210 filing fee and in 30 days you'll have your documents. Now the next thing is you need a business phone like an 800 telephone number 877 telephone number do not for whatever reason do not use a Google voice number do not use your personal telephone number do not use a whatsapp number you need to have a business phone number this is one of the most important steps that you must follow here we go see plans and pricing this is cheap 20 bucks a month 30 bucks a month you can have you a business phone number this is important because you're going to be filling out applications on all your documents this phone number the phone number that you select this needs to be the phone number that you put on all of your documents it is extremely extremely important that you follow these steps because then what happens is you have to then take this number and you have to list it in the 411 directory which this is the site called right here listyourself.net and I'm gonna let me start posting all of these in the chat. I'll do matter of fact towards the end. As you can see, listyourself.net. You have to go to listyourself.net and you have to go and set up your telephone number so that it can get put into all of the directories. As you can see here, let's go regional. Gives you a breakdown. As you can see, the quick start is $25 a month. It is not going to cost you a lot of money. As you can see right now, $20 a month for the Vonage phone number. It's going to cost you about $25 a month to have your business listed here. Once you do this for the first few months, you don't need to keep paying for this. You can eventually just cancel it. You don't have to have it running over and over and over again. And guys, yes, please hit that like button. Let me take a sip of water. So we have our number listed in the directory. We are incorporated. We picked our LLC, our C Corp, our S Corp. We have a professional email. We have a professional business address. The next thing you need to have is what is known as a Duns number. I'm going to be honest with you. I have yet to use my Duns number on any of my documentation. A Duns number is similar to a EIN number, sort of like your social security number, but most banks only need your EIN number. Dun & Bradstreet is sort of like a credit monitoring system for your business. They're, they are going to try to upsell you, sell you a whole host of different products and things that they have. You do not need, a, you do not need any of the stuff that they're going to sell you. Just apply for the free Dun's number. It takes you about 30 days to get it for free. Again, if you want to rush it, let's go here, get a Dun's number. If you want to rush the process, you could speed it up, you could pay for it, you'll get your DUNS number within seven to 10 days. And then you just go here, I have a US based business. And then you would just simply go here and you would fill out this information. Actually, this is not it. This is not the application. Request the DUNS number. Uh, I'll come back to that. So. I'm going to pull up the application in a second. But on this application, this application needs to match word for word the exact address that you have with DaVinci. Your virtual office needs to be on this application. Your business name needs to be spelled correctly. I cannot tell you how many people I've seen get denied funding because, for example, on their 
articles, their business documents, it will say sweet, right? But then on the virtual office, sweet is spelled S-T-E. So because the names don't match, remember, individual people are not approving you for credit. It's all computer-based. It's all an algorithm. So if the information doesn't match up, it's going to impact you because it's going to look like it's two different businesses. Make sure all of your documents has the same name as does in your business documents. Also, same telephone number and same address. It has to be uniform across the board. Now, after you do that, you need to go and you need to list your business on the internet. So you can set up a Facebook profile. You don't need to go have like an Instagram and all that. Facebook profile's good. There's a website called Google My Business. Or you got to type in Google Business and we'll let you come here and list your business. Also, you could do the same thing in Bing. You come over to Bing and you would put in all of your information that's on your business documents. Everything needs to be uniformed across the board. And then you would come over to Yellow Pages and you would do the same exact thing. And I want to just flip it over real quick just to show you something. To show you that I'm not just talking. Uh, right As you can see right here, I have my document. When you, when you fill out the document with Google and Bing, they are going to send you one of these cards in the mail. Right? It takes about seven to 10 days for them to send you a PIN number. They're going to send you a PIN number for you to activate your business address with that location. And once you've done these basic things, now yes, there are some other steps that you can take to make sure that you're gonna get funded, but these basic steps, if you just simply follow these simple basic steps and you have a decent credit score, when I say decent, your credit score needs to be somewhere in the ballpark 660 680 you need to have an established credit profile so meaning that you have some store cards you have some revolving credit accounts maybe you have like a personal loan a student loan a car loan and this is on your personal side now you can go for funding to a bank why because you have a business telephone number you have a business email your business is listed on the internet, you have your EIN number, you have your DUNS number. So now you look like a legitimate business. All of these things are extremely important because you may be saying to yourself, listen, why do I gotta follow all of these simple little tedious steps? The reason why you need to follow these simple tedious steps is because the banks are old fashioned, right? They're not going to, they feel this way. For a person to go through all of this, you're not going to be scamming. It's very hard for a person to go through all of these steps if they want to scam and scheme. Most people who want to scam and scheme, they're looking for the easy buck, you know, in and out. To go through all of these steps where you got to go sit down with an attorney, pick a business name, get incorporated, get a business address, get a business email, get a business website, then list your business. To go through all of that, get a business telephone number, that must mean you're pretty serious. And once you do these basic things, that sets you up to be able to go out and get the funding that you need for your business. And just make sure that all of the information that you have is uniformed across the board. Also, another reason why you may want to sit down with an attorney is if you have a single member LLC, there's not a lot of paperwork to file. But if you have like investors in your company or different managers in your company, or you have like a DBA doing business as, you want to sit down with an attorney. It's important that when you are going into business, you go into it understanding that a business is an investment. So having an attorney is important. Having an accountant is important. Why? I've been sued three times. The reason what saved me when I've been sued is the fact that I had an attorney who can tell me this is a serious lawsuit or nah, it's not serious. You can ignore it. So getting an attorney is extremely important. Give me one second. Let me take a sip. Don't be cheap when it comes to your business. Invest money because the worst thing that you want to happen is you start out with an LLC and then you find out, ah, you know, I need a C Corp or I need an S Corp. Now you got to go spend more money to go make the amendments and change things over. Why do that? Or come to find out you don't have the proper liability protection in place. And now it opens you up to all type of lawsuits and liens. 
Do your due diligence. Sit down with an attorney. Because if you're going to be doing business in a capitalistic society, you need to understand that capitalism is all about competition. And you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself from frivolous lawsuits. Uh, you know, because like I said before, I've been in, I've been in business now for four years. Uh, I've built three companies and I've never been denied funding. There there are individuals on the Internet that will charge you thousands of dollars for this basic information. But it's basic. It's tedious, but it works. And if you have these things in order, I promise you, you will get the funding that you need for your business if you have decent credit. And I, I must first start off by saying this isn't financial advice. I'm not a licensed attorney. I'm simply sharing with you my perspective since I've been building business and business credit. Uh, also, you don't need a fax number. Don't let Vonage and these other companies try to sell you a fax. You don't need a fax. You just need a business phone with Vonage or um, someone else put it in there. Uh, they're both the same. Uh, you said virtual offices and co-working spaces. Are they the same? No. Uh, from my, I never used a co-working space, but from what I understand... The reason why uh, a virtual office is, uh, you know what, that's a good thing. I, I I don't know. I really don't know if a co-working space versus a virtual office. I've always used virtual offices. So there's another place called, Re, uh, I think it's called Regis. That's a, a virtual office. I like to go with what works. I use a virtual office. My virtual office costs me 60 bucks a month. So what are we looking at here? Let's calculate everything. Let's flip the screen over so we can see the total price that it will cost you. Give me one second. But that's a good question, Ariane. I, I don't have an exact answer to that. Uh, so your domain name is going to probably run you 40 bucks altogether to get their website protection. Uh, you want to protect your identity to get both domain names, the .net and the .com. That's probably going to run you 40 bucks. But this is a yearly occurring charge it's not a monthly reoccurring charge the virtual office is going to run you about 40 bucks 60 bucks then the llc depending on what option you want to go for if you want to go for the economy versus the express honestly the express is just so you can get all your documents quickly and you get that brown book i sent you uh, you could go with the economy 30 days you don't have to rush because it's going to take you 30 days to get your free duns number if you don't want to pay so the economy is the same way this is going to be a one-time fee so you figure we're looking at what 290 bucks altogether so this is 290 but this is not monthly so monthly you have 60 varnish is going to cost you 30 that's 90 bucks and 25 here so you're looking at what 115 bucks 115 bucks a month is what it will cost you to have your business up and running and you may have some other small expenses if you want to get like a business cell phone understand that a lot of these things are tax write-offs for your business you can deduct them at the end of the year so it's an investment and you should be willing to invest money but altogether overall between the 40 bucks for the website another 300 bucks to uh what we said 215 with 290 here so again, it's going to run you depending on your state, it's going to run you about 300 bucks to $1000 to get your business off the ground. Uh, understand it's worth it if you want to get funding, if you want your business to be set up properly, this is what you have to go through in order to uh, make sure that you get the proper funding. Think about it. If I have to spend 300 bucks or 500 bucks in order to get a credit card for 12,000, 16,000 or 20,000, dollars why not? So I walked you through. I wanted to redo this video because the last time I did the video, I kind of just ran through it without actually actually like walking you through the steps. Now you can go through this video and understand this isn't the only way. There are multiple. There's multiple ways to skin a cat, right? We've all heard that saying before. Figure out what works for you. I'm just telling you that these basic steps guarantee you that if your credit is decent you will get funding. Now you still will have to do a personal guarantee because you have to develop that relationship with the bank. There are other ways that you could get funding without using your social security number because that's what a personal guarantee is. A personal guarantee means that you're going to actually use your social security number to guarantee that business line of credit. There are ways, but again, it's slower. It's going to probably take you anywhere from 180 days, 90 to 180 days to get that type of funding. So if you have bad credit, you're going to have to probably go the net 30, net 60 
uh, credit card routes, right? Those are like store cards with like Office Depot, Restaurant Depot. Um, and again, that's still a hit or miss because some banks are still require you to do a personal guarantee. The best way to get away from a personal guarantee is just having a relationship with the bank. You know, I've been doing business now for so long that I don't have to do a PG when I uh, go for business credit. That's just because I've been doing this for long and I have a good relationship. So let's go to the chat. How long has the stream been going? I don't want to make this go too long. 30 minutes. It's good. Um, let's go to the chat to see if there's any questions. Uh, f free legal programs. Make a mistake. I need a business phone. I heard Vonage and Ring. Yeah, Ring. I think Ring Central is actually cheaper, Ariane. Or, uh, and guys, let's see. Uh, there's 28 of you watching. Could you please do me a favor and hit the like button? Uh, this is very valuable. When will banks start to recognize the virtual business uh, for funding? Again, this whole process is probably going to take you about 30 to 45 days. So after 45 days, you should be up and running. And again, these basic things, is all of this stuff, because when you, when you fill out the application, it's better to go into the bank too if you have like a relationship with their banks. And you go sit in the bank and you... They're, they're going to see that you are serious because you have all of your documents in place. Everything is in line. And it shows that you've invested and you've taken interest into building up your business. You're not just coming in there like, oh, I don't know. You have your EIN. You have your DUNS. You have your professional-looking email address. You have your professional address. You have everything that you need. And it just makes it so much easier to, uh, to get funding. So, but I, I need to look into the whole idea of co-working spaces. I've never looked into co-working spaces virtu uh, versus virtual offices. So, let's see, any other questions in here? Any other questions? Any other questions? So we'll, we'll go for five more minutes. If anyone has any questions, I'll answer some of the questions now. But again, I know that these steps sound tedious, but trust me, follow these steps because there are other ways too where you can get four credit cards at one time. Like I know methods where if you have all your stuff in place, it will be one hard inquiry on your social security number, but you can get four credit cards at one time. But I'm going to save that for later on. I'm not going to disclose that today. Um, it's going to be extremely hard to get a line of credit on a new business. I'm going to be honest with you, uh, because you have no revenue, your business, your business hasn't made any money. You haven't made any revenue. So to think that you're going to go into a business to get a line of credit, remember a line of credit is on the actual business. Whereas a business credit card, it's unsecured, right? Like you're basically securing that line of credit through the bank. If you get a line of credit versus a unsecured credit card is just it's based on your your it's really based on your social security number and that's why if you have a good mix of personal credit like for example i have store credit cards such as macy's such as lowe's home depot then i have revolving credit cards such as american express uh, bank of america capital one then i have a car loan uh, student loan. So I have a good mixed credit profile as an individual and I have decent sized limits. So when a bank sees that as a person, you're responsible with your credit, you pay your bills on time, you have a mixed portfolio, you have a, a good credit history probably for five years, seven years, you're established. Banks don't mind loaning you money for a business that you just started. Now, if your credit score is not that good and you have some bankruptcies, you may have something in collections, maybe you paid it off, but it may still be there. You may have been 30 days or 60 days late on your car. Those type of things are going to be immediate red flags and you may not get funding if those things is on your personal credit. Because with a new business, you're going to have to use a personal guarantee. Now, for me, I already had two businesses, so when I went to start my third business, I didn't need to use a personal guarantee because I already had a relationship with that uh, the bank. But um, is it better to get a loan or a credit card tallying a hundred thousand dollars? Me personally, I love credit cards. I'm gonna be honest with you because number one is simple interest. The interest is going to be cheaper. Number two, it's revolving. See, here's the problem with a personal loan: the underwriting process is extremely hard for getting a personal loan like on the business so and the problem is once you pay off that loan on the business or on yourself 
you paid it off now. So if you want to access that $100,000 again, what do you have to do? You have to go and fill out all of that paperwork again. They have to check your background, check your credit. That can take anywhere from 50 to 30 days. Whereas with the credit card, it's revolving. I can get access to it immediately. I pay it down today. I want to use it tomorrow. I can use it. Also, as I said to you before, if I have debt somewhere else, I can do a balance transfer. The, the credit cards give you flexibility. The problem with credit cards is after that intro rate of 0%, after 18 months or 24 months, the problem is that interest rate spikes up to 22% or, or higher. And that's when you don't really want to mess around with those credit cards. But then, as I said to you in the video, and that video is in the description below where I was walking through uh, how I've been building my business credit. You get something in the mail known as this balance transfer checks. And there are promotions as well where... It'll cost you 3% to use the balance transfer, but it's only 0% against the actual balance that you're going to be balance transferring. So to me, I'm a, I'm a credit card junkie. I love credit cards because it just it gives you so much flexibility with credit cards. You know, even, for example, and I don't recommend this, but let's say that, you know, you're running a new business, you're in trouble, and you have two credit cards, and let's say... The minimum payment on one credit card is three hundred dollars, and the minimum payment on another on the other credit card is four hundred. Well, if the interest rate zero percent, I can charge that card four hundred dollars, take that four hundred dollars off the credit card, one card, and use that four hundred and pay another card. So now, if my business isn't making any money, I can just churn the cards back and forth, and do that. So rather than having to pay, you know, four hundred dollars out of pocket for a business that's not making money, I can use one credit card to pay another credit card and then use that money to pay another credit card. So it just gives you so much flexibility and I, I'm going to dive deep. This is surface level information. I want to introduce you to how you can get funding, but credit cards literally was a lifesaver for me. It like lit, literally a credit card, credit card debt has been a lifesaver for me. It just has been. I was able to make, I told you a cryptocurrency. I was able to buy Bitcoin back on Coinbase with my credit card. And then I caught that whole boom, simply using the bank's money. Now, you still have to be responsible with your credit, right? I'm not telling you to go out here and go book a vacation to Jamaica and party for 10 days and max out your credit card. No, I'm saying your credit card needs to be used for business purposes and you're trying to build it. You're trying to establish something. But one of the biggest problems with new businesses is they run out of money. That's one of the biggest problems problems new business have is that they just don't have the funding. So if you do these basic steps and you have decent credit, you can get funding. You need these docs to open business checking account to oh, oh, most most definitely. You need these documents in order for you to get um, funding and open up a business checking account. Is it too late to get a Dunn's number if you already set up LLC? No, it's never too late. I'm still waiting for the IRS to send the EIM. Great info. Wish I knew this two months ago. You can always go back and fix this, Queen Obsidian Code. You can always go back and fix it. And also, please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, hit this, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and like this video. Uh, it's never too late to go back and amend your documents. I didn't know this information when I first got started either. You have to just go back to an attorney and have them amend your documents. That's all you have to do. Um, what is a Dunn's number? A Dunn's number is similar to a, is similar to your EIN or your uh, social security number. I've never had to use my Dunn's number, so I'm not going to sit up here and say you need it, but most people recommend that you have it. So most people recommend that you have it. So you you need you need to make sure that you um you you have it. I guess that it it I guess it's like another step of legitimizing your business. But I, when I got my business cell phone, like this cell phone I have is through my business. I didn't have to use my Dunn's number. I just needed my EIN number. When any credit application I've ever applied for, I never had to use my Dunn's number not one time. So you know. Just gonna be honest with you, I, I I don't I don't really see the need for it. But I heard that if you're in like the construction industry, 
or you're into industries, I would say like construction, they said that you need a DUNS number. Again, I've never had to use it, so I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you, but I just, I've never had to. So I don't want to lie to you at all. Uh, Navy Federal Credit Union is an amazing credit card to have. Uh, they give you big limits right out the gate. The problem is you have to have a family member or a friend that is a part of the military to recommend you. It's an invite only type of thing. So uh, you, you only can be invited there. I've been I've been looking to get involved in the Navy Federal Credit Union. I just haven't I haven't had the time. Uh, one of my subscribers, excuse me emailed me and mentioned the uh, Navy Federal Credit Union, but I just didn't have the time to really get into it. And plus, like, I've been uh, really, like, utilizing my credit, and I have enough credit cards right now. Like, I have over a quarter million dollars of credit, available credit. Like, literally, I have big credit limits. So I don't really need any more credit. But again, there's nothing wrong with getting it. But I would recommend you try to get that credit card if you could definitely try to use that like if you're a veteran and you've been in the military use your benefits man you got some re really really good benefits for veterans yeah banks put a, paul banks put a stop to that uh buying credit um using your credit card i was lucky i was on coinbase i was lucky to be able to use my credit card right before the boom happened i, I would say that i would say around may February, May, I was able to use use able to use your credit card back on Coinbase. This is like two years ago, two and a half years ago. You could use a credit card on Coinbase, but they changed that. But there are still ways that you can use your credit card to buy Bitcoin. I'm not going to say that right now in this video. I'll save that for a later video. But if you can read between the lines, there are ways that you can get that money off your credit card to buy Bitcoin uh, with your credit card, with the balance. Um. Uh, Navy Federal Navy Federal Credit Union is going to probably give you the highest limit. Uh, also, I would say uh, the Chase Inc. card, the business card, that's a good card to get. Uh, the Bank of America card that I showed you, the Travel Rewards card, is a beautiful card to start out with. I'm going to actually do a video. That's a good. That's a good question. I'm going to actually do a video and and break you and break that down as far as what credit cards are good to start out with. So that's good. You just gave me an idea for some content to create. Um, what else do we have? What else do we have? And, um, yeah, that should be it. But yeah, Queen Obsidian Code, even if you made these mistakes, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's something I can add. You can always go back and amend your documents because, for example, your business address may change. So you can go and you can fix that on your documentation. You can go and you can change the, uh, the telephone number, the email addresses, anything. Even if you have more members come on or members leave. You're a corporation. You have to go and amend those documents. So it's not hard to do at all. Uh, you definitely could do that. No, no. A balance transfer most of the time on a balance transfer is going to be a promotion. And they're going to tell you it's probably going to be like 0%. Every balance transfer I've ever seen, a balance transfer check, they're always 0%. So it's not a cash advance at all. You can you can take the balance transfer check. For example, let's say that your credit limit is sixteen thousand, and they sent you a balance transfer. You can balance transfer five, six, seven thousand dollars of that money. You can write a check and actually deposit that check in your account and cash it as cash, and it'll be zero percent. They're only going to charge you three percent for the actual fee for the check, but the the amount of money that you take out, it's going to be zero percent. So you got to think about that. You you basically have money at zero percent for twelve months or for 18 months that's for that's phenomenal if you're smart i'm not telling you to be a pig i'm not telling you to go waste your money and buy a bunch of office equipment that you don't need when you're first starting out of your business you have to be lean you're bootstrapping right you're trying to get everything up and running but as i said before it just gives you wiggle room that's why i love credit cards it gives you room to maneuver it gives you a chance to make some mistakes and you don't have to worry about oh my god you know I only have 60 days to, to make payroll. I only have 60 days left of cash to operate my business. No, you have you have an extended amount of time to do so. So, um, what else do we have here? So, so, good questions, guys. Good questions. And 
we're coming up on 45 minutes so good build good build good build good build so i'll take a few more questions if anyone has them and then we'll get ready to wrap up this live stream again this is just the basics this is not really good great tip it and this is why you don't want to put real estate that's that's a good question you do not want to put real estate in the name of your company because banks do not want to loan money to people because they know if they loan money to you, it's risky. So here's the beautiful thing that you can do. You can put, you can name your company as, uh, you know, um, I don't know, Robert Johnson, right? That can be the actual name of your company, Robert Johnson Inc. or Robert Johnson LLC. Just the name of your company. You can go get funding for... $20,000, $30,000 if you get two or three credit cards. You can then take that money off of the credit card. This is risky now. You got to know what the hell you're doing. And you can invest in real estate. Or you can invest in cryptocurrency like I did. You can use credit card bold to see reviews on a credit card and score needed to get approved. It's helpful. Yeah, you can do that. Or you can also look at um, Credit Karma. They tell you. There's a lot of different websites that can tell you like the credit score you need. But again, a lot of things are subjective, right? It's not. There's no one size fits all solution for getting approved. For example, I've gotten approved for credit cards and I've had a 660 credit score, but because I have an extensive credit profile and I have big limits, banks are saying he's responsible with credit, so we want to give him more money. You know, so it all just depends on the individual and it all depends on your credit profile. That's the most important thing as a business owner and even as a person. You got to be responsible with your credit. Don't be a fool with your credit. Don't don't try to you know buy fancy shoes and nice clothes. Don't go try to buy the new iPhone. Buy stuff that you need with your credit card. Make investments that you that you feel are going to pay off with your credit cards. Don't be a fool with your credit because one thing about credit cards is they they sucker you in with that zero percent interest rate and then. After 18 months, that interest start kicking in. And then your payments, they go from $100 and some change up to $200 or $300 and some change. And most of, your, most of the minimum payment is going to the interest. So be responsible. I'm not telling you to come on here and be a fool with your credit. I'm telling you, be calculated, be smart, be strategic, and you'll be fine. So, um, like, I, I was able to buy real estate with, my, with one of my credit cards recently. So... You know, good cash flowing deal immediately. So I knew that the cash flow coming in would be able to uh, finance the deal. And I, I went for it. So you just got to be smart and know what you're doing. And don't be a pig. Because you know what they say, bears make money, bulls make money, but pigs get slaughtered. You can't be a pig when it comes to investing, entrepreneurship, and business. Don't be greedy and don't be fearful. Be right in the middle. And with that being said, guys, we are probably going to end this here. And I'm going to be on my other channel, and I'm, pro I'm probably going to go live on um, my other channel about uh, um, Dame Dash. So, you have to have an operating agreement, Blueprint Rod. Uh, you, you, that's why you sit down with an attorney, and you can come through, you can draw up the operating agreement depending on... Who, how much investment you have in the company, who's ahead of the company, who's the head manager, et cetera, et cetera. So you're going to have an operating agreement. You need to have an operating agreement uh, for your company. Uh, all businesses have that. But, you know, that's the thing with LegalZoom. They can do that for you or you get an attorney to do that. So I'll cover that in a later video. Um, but um, that should do it right there for us right here. So uh, please do me a favor and... Um, is it something you could do for yourself? Yes, you. everything that I stated, you can do for yourself. The thing is, should you do it yourself? Should you try to do any of these things on your own? As I said earlier, I, I guess you're late to the video. No, you should always go out and try to find an attorney. You should always go through an entity like LegalZoom because if there's a mistake, you can hold someone accountable. You do not want to try to start doing stuff on your own and make a mistake because it will come back to bite you in the long run. So we're going to end this here. Uh, please like this video, share this video, drop a comment below. As I said, this information is free. There are people on the internet that will charge you thousands of dollars for this information. I'm not charging you anything. Uh, but if you want to support the content, 
My PayPal and my Cash App is in the description below. So do me a favor and like the video, as I said earlier, share the video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. And I'll probably be on my other channel in about like an hour, hour and a half, and I'll talk about uh, Dame Dash. Have a great night.